hands and lift your voice as we love you today, God. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we love you today, God. Hallelujah. We feel your presence in this room. We thank you for every individual that is here today in this house, those watching online, that you would bless them today. Those that hear this message at some other time, God bless them today. Lord, your love that we're with you loved us, oh God. While we were yet sinners, you loved us, oh God. Amen, amen, amen. The book of Revelation, chapter 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 12. We're going to read a few verses, starting with verse 9. It is great to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Each and every one of you, we are so glad that you are here. Nothing like being here on Sunday morning, I'm telling you. So thankful for what God is doing. God loves us. Just turn to two or three people and say, God really does love you. He really does. Yes, he does. Amen. I'm here ready for the word of the Lord today. Praise the name of God. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 says, And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. A person who believed this is referencing what happened in the Garden of Eden with the serpent and Eve. It's going back all the way to the beginning of time. That old dragon, or that dragon, that that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Matter of fact, the scripture talks about one-third, that the, the tail of the dragon grabbed a third of the angels that went with him. In my study, I, I believe this is talking about the beginning of time. Not now or the end of time. But it, it, it defines his nature. And um, it's, you're going to see that in just a second. But the devil was cast down to the earth and he's all these bad things. He's deceived the world. But I love verse 10. Because it's no doubt it's saying there's a devil. There's a Satan. That old serpent, the dragon. But I love verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Come on, the devil's got a voice. But there's another voice from heaven. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Let me just put it this way. Everything the devil's tried to do, but God has a kingdom that's more powerful than the enemy. says the voice said saying in heaven now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power the power of his Christ are you ready for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuseth them before our God day and night he's not just the old serpent he's the accuser He's not just the deceiver. He's the accuser. But I love verse 11 too. And they overcame him. We, we, they overcame the accuser by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And whoo, somebody shout amen. And they love not their lives unto the death. Look at verse 20, verse 12. Therefore rejoice. Ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. He, he wants to tear you apart. This is why. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. You know why he's coming against you? Because he knows time is short for him. He's about to leave your situation. Because there's one coming that's greater than him that's been in your life. 
I like what I heard one preacher say. He said, the devil's got leaving on his mind. Look at your neighbor and say, the devil's about to leave me alone. I'd like to preach to you for the next few moments simply from the old song that was written by the great songwriter Andre Crouch. Amen. There is power. Somebody shout, there's power in the blood. He writes in that song, the blood will never lose its power. Somebody shout, the blood will never lose its power. Oh, clap your hands and give him a high praise today. He's a worthy. He's a worthy of all of our praise. Amen, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. When you go back to creation, you will find that, that there were four voices. Voices that were in the Garden of Eden. Number one, you've got the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. Number two, you've got Adam's voice in the garden. And Adam said, I preached about that in the, uh, earlier this year in a, in, a, in a series. You've got the voice of Eve that's in the garden. But you also have the voice of the serpent, that old devil, the deceiver. You'll find those four voices in the garden. Because of their sin, they're separated from God and put out of the garden. And you'll find that Eve has a son and calls his name Cain. She has a second son and calls his name Abel. So there's the fifth and the sixth voice. But there's a seventh voice that I find at the beginning of time with humanity. It's when God came and spoke to Cain and said, where's your brother at? He had got jealous of God's blessing in his life. And Cain took a club and killed his brother Abel and tried to hide him. But he said, am I my brother's keeper? How I many know the answer is yes. You are your brother's keeper. And he said, in response to God, sort of I don't know where he is. And the Lord said, but I hear the voice of your brother's blood crying unto me from the ground. It appears to me the first exclamated voice crying out was the blood. It was the blood of Abel that was crying to God from the earth. Oh, could I preach to you today? It seems to me in Scripture there's something about the power of innocent blood. Abel's innocent blood was crying unto God. It was the blood, a light that was given that was crying out to the throne of God. You'll find significance that when death was going to come in Exodus chapter 12, it's where we get the Passover feast that follows this to remind us, remind the Jews of what happened when they were coming out of Egypt. And I'm going to tell somebody in this room, you and your family is about to come out of some stuff you never thought you could get out of. God's going to give you power to come out of it. You hear me? Some of you have been struggling with a lot of things, but God gives you the power to get out of what you didn't think you could ever get out of. God's going to bring you out. Somebody shout, God's going to bring us out. And he told Moses, he said, I'm going to bring the people out, but I'm going to bring the 10th plague, and it's death is going to come, and the death angel is going to come. And he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a lamb and kill it. Take the blood of that lamb, not just any lamb, but an unblemished lamb, an innocent lamb, a spotless lamb, and take the blood and put it up on the doorpost. He said, when you put it up on the doorpost, when death comes, the Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Because there's something about innocent blood that speaks out to God. The blood says, you can't bring death in this house because the blood of innocence is here. The blood says you can't have this family. On the inside of that door would have been a man, his wife, and his kids. Their shoes were on. They've got, they've got, they've got staffs in their hand. The kids got their backpacks on, and they're waiting to get out of Egypt. Yes, and death was coming to the land. Could I tell you, the blood's going to protect you from death but it's going to give you the ability to get to the promised land. There's power in the blood. 
I want somebody to shout, there's power in the blood. The Bible says that the blood, the blood shall be a token unto you. That when I see the blood, you're going to be treated different than the person that does not have the blood. There's something about the power of the blood, of innocent blood. And I say to you, I agree with John the Baptist. When he was baptizing in the Jordan River at Bethabara and Jesus comes to the baptism and he stops everything he's doing and he declares what Isaiah prophesied, what Jeremiah had mentioned. He stopped the sermon and he looked up at the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. Can I say to you today, I agree with Pilate when he said, I find no fault in him. I agree with Pilate's wife who said, have nothing to do with this just man. I come to preach to you today, Jesus Christ was perfect in all of his ways. He's the most innocent of any human that has ever been. (laughs) Praise the name of the Lord. And when they brought the adulterous woman to him in a dirty temple and they threw her at the feet of Jesus, he was the only innocent one in the building. He had every right to condemn, but he gets on his knees, puts his hands in the dirt of a temple. I don't want to go to a dirty church. Come on, that looked good on the outside, but the dirty on the inside. Come on, he gets down and he puts his hands in the dirt and he doesn't look at the accusers. It appears to me he won't even look at those that are making accusation because it's hard for mercy. It's hard for mercy to look at accusation. It's hard for mercy to glamorize the accusing of a sinner. And they're standing there with stones in their hand, ready to destroy this woman for the sin she was caught in the very act of. She's wrong. She's guilty. She has been caught. They've got the evidence. And they say, what do you want us to do with her? And you know what? He doesn't even speak to them. Uh, he, He doesn't even look at them in this moment. He just answers this way. He that is without sin. If you're innocent, go ahead and stone her. He that's without sin, let him cast the first stone. Because innocent blood has power. And if you don't have any sin, go ahead and kill her. But the only one in the building that had the power to do something was him. And when he said it, his voice revealed to them what their clothes could not cover up. Because the Bible says all things are naked and open under the eyes of him with whom we have to do. You can fool me, you can fool your spouse, you can fool your kids, you can fool your co-worker, but God knows all things. He sees everybody. He knows the secret thoughts. He knows the thoughts and the intents. He knew the woman's sin before she was ever brought to his feet. He knew they what they did, when they did it, where they did it, and he knew exactly what they were trying to hide. He said, he that's without sin, go ahead and take her life. And from the oldest to the youngest, they dropped their stones. You can hear the, the, the plunk of the rock hit the floor, walked out. I preached about it on Easter Sunday. And they left. And when they left the building, he lifts his head and looks at her. He said, woman, where are thine accusers? Where's the accusers of her? And she, she sheepishly, cowering down, peeks out to see who's going to throw the stone. And when she looked, there's no accuser in the building. Because the lamb has a way of removing the accusations from you. Come on, the lamb has a way of removing the evidence that was against you. I like what the lamb says. Are you ready to hear what the lamb says? He said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. The lamb has something to say right now. It says, I don't condemn you either. Come on, I'm telling you, there's power in the lamb. There's power in the voice of Jesus Christ. You can be seated. 
He's hanging on the cross, nails are in his hand, nails in his feet, crown of thorns on his head, blood is running down his face. It's dripping off of his chin, running down his chest, dripping off of his kneecaps, flowing down his legs, dripping off of the end of his toes. And the blood is dripping in the ground as he is dying. And when it hits the ground, nothing happens. Nothing happens. He's hanging on the cross, dying. And while he's hanging there, before he dies, you hear the lamb say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He, hanging on the cross, speaks on your behalf and my behalf because the blood of the lamb was to be placed upon the mercy seat that removes the evidence that you're guilty. I I, I gotta talk to somebody here today. One of the 10 commandments was this. Are y'all with me right now? One of the 10 commandments was this. Thou shalt not use the name of the Lord in vain. If you use the name of the Lord in vain, you will not be guiltless in the judgment. That name's not to be treated just like any other name. The name of God was it just to be thrown around as some byword? It's supposed to have purpose when it's spoken. Come on, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed, shall be delivered, shall be saved. When it's invoked over you, spoken over you in baptism, neither is there salvation in any other name. For there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Are you ready? The whole purpose of the name was to make you guiltless. Come on. When the name of the Lamb is spoken over you, it removes the evidence of anything that you've ever done wrong. When you say the name of Jesus, you're speaking about the name of the Lamb. The name of the one that removes the accusations of the enemy. Somebody shout hallelujah. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he hangs on the cross. Blood is soaking in the ground at the base of the cross. Nothing has happened. You know why nothing's happened? I'm gonna tell you why nothing's happened. Because the testament cannot go into effect until the testator dies. When you're gonna, when you, at some point in your age and you've got children, grandkids and great greats, whatever, and you wanna hand something down to you, when you die, it's called your last will and what? Everybody say last will and testament. Guess what? They don't get it until you die. It's not an effect until you die. Are y'all hearing me right now? Jesus said, this is my blood in the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. This was at the Last Supper. He was telling them that my blood is not just going to forgive. It's going to remove any evidence that they ever did it. That's what remission means. It means to remove any ability to find evidence that you committed the sins that you committed. And when his blood of the innocent Lamb of God is dripping and flowing to the ground, nothing happened. But the Bible says when he gave up the ghost. When he died, something shook. Something went into effect. Are y'all hearing me preach right now? Something happened when he died. And the Bible says that dead people got out of their grave because his blood will make all things new and what was dead will come alive. Somebody shout, there's power in the blood. And the thing that separated you from God, when he died, they sang a while ago, it, it, it tore the veil from the top to the bottom, giving you and me both access to God. I come to tell you, I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done, how long you've been away from God. I've got news for you. You complete the blood of Jesus and he will speak innocence over your life. He will speak innocence over your life. Somebody shout amen. Amen. I'm in a new covenant now. 
I'm in the New Testament now. I'm just going to tell you, you don't have to go kill a lamb to get remission of sins. You don't have to kill another lamb. It's one and done. What he did is enough blood and enough power to forgive anybody in this building. And I'm going to tell you, there's not one sin committed that's too great that his blood can't remove the accusation of it. His blood is powerful. He said, when I see the blood, death has to go somewhere else. Isn't it interesting from the beginning of time that that old devil, that old serpent, somebody say the old devil, he lures you into sin on this side of the sin. And then on this side of it, he said, look what you did. Who do you think you are? Come on. You know what comes into the room after you sin? Shame. Guilt. I wish I never had. I wish I'd never be. Today, I'm not coming here to tell you that you're not guilty for what you did because you can remember the moment. You made the choice. You made the decision. I had a man one time. He said, well, I, preacher, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never sinned. I thought you just did. <laughs> All have sinned. Everybody in this building, look at your neighbor and say, you know he's talking about you. Amen. Everybody. Anybody wish you could go back and do some things over? You can't. You can't. There are no do-overs. Can't go back. Sister Ross, you said it best I've ever heard it. She said, Pastor, I wish I'd have never left the church when I was 18. 55 years away from God. She said, there's no do-overs though. She said, but there are new beginnings. Oh, yeah. I'm preaching to somebody watching online right now. You don't feel worthy to be back in the house of God. You don't feel worthy to be here. You quit listening to that devil. I know enough blood to remove the evidence of sin and shame. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everybody in this building at some moment in your life, you could say, I wish I hadn't started that. I wish I'd have never picked that up. I wish I'd never started that happen. Wish I'd never hung out, went to that place, and look what the mess I got myself in. Just fall at the feet of Jesus, and he's going to get you out of what you got yourself into. Amen. Amen. He said, that old, that dragon, that old serpent, Satan, the devil, the deceiver, he accuses you day and night before God. Look what they did. Look what you did. Anybody ever had that voice show up in your life and say, you're not worthy to be there? You know where you come from. You know, you're like your daddy. You don't have a daddy living for God. All these things that make you feel like you're not worthy. That that accusational spirit that shows up in your world called shame. I'm going to preach just here for a few more moments here today. But it says God doesn't want to hear anything you got to say. You can't praise him. You failed God. You failed your family. You didn't keep your word. You did all of these things. That, That devil's an accuser. Come on, he's an accuser. I was, I was on a fast one time. I've said this to the church before. I was on a fast one time and I, I, I told the Lord I was going to do this fast and I, I messed up. You ever, you ever told the Lord you're going to fast? And I, I, I didn't fulfill the fast like I said I was going to. And I, I don't remember why. It's been too long. But man, I heard a voice say to me, you're cursed. You broke your vow. You will never again be able to fast 24 hours ever again. You'll never be able to do a fast again. And I'm telling you, that voice sounded so real to me. Don't look at me like you've never heard voices. That'll lock us all up. Amen. Come on, condemning voices. Voices from within that says, who do you think you are? Condemning voices. And that voice said, you'll never fast. And man, I'm going to fast. 
I go on a fast and I get like the 23 hours of a 24 hour fast. And I'd grab a Pepsi out of the refrigerator or something. And as soon as it hit my lips, I'd hear, told you. 18 hours into a fast to put a mint in my mouth. Probably needed it. But forgot, not here. Told you. Come on, I'm talking to normal people right now. And I thought I'm condemned. God don't want to hear. I didn't keep my word and God's against me. And one day I woke up and realized that's not the voice of God. His, he knows I'm just flesh. His mercies are renewed every morning. He's about getting up and doing it again. Come on, rejoice not against me, all my enemies. When I fall, I shall arise. Come on, there's a get up inside of me and do this again. I'm telling you, I went on the longest fast I'd ever been on. You know what I realized? That devil was lying to me. You're not good enough. You'll never be. He understands. If he can get you to condemn you, you will not pray. You will not continue because you'll think you're not good enough to have a relationship with God. And there's a war going on. And it's a war of voices. And it's the voice of the serpent that spoke to Eve. It's the voice of the serpent that spoke to David. It's, a, it's an old voice that is spoken. And he said, let me tell you though, there's another voice in the building. And I hear a voice from heaven that says, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. Are you ready? and the power of his Christ. There's another voice. You know what I want to come? I want to echo heaven's voice to this congregation. And I'm going to tell somebody that feels condemned and not good enough, your best days are ahead of you and not behind you. God is going to heal your family. He is going to restore your mind. He is going to... He's going to let love come back in your heart. It's not over yet. He said, let me tell you how you're overcoming. Somebody shout, we are overcomers. The Bible says, and they overcame him. Who? The accuser. Somebody shout, us. The Bible says, they, somebody, they overcame him. Look what it says in verse 11, Revelation 12. And verse 11. And they overcame the accuser. How? By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You know what the blood of the lamb says? You're innocent. What sin? What adultery? Neither do I condemn you. When you are baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. Your righteousness was as filthy rags, but we put on his righteousness. What I'm saying is, I hear the voice of the blood saying, neither do I condemn you. I find no fault in you. I don't see anything wrong with you. That's what the blood is saying to somebody this morning. Come on, you gotta put it under the blood. And under the blood, there's miracles. And under the blood, there's power. Somebody shout, I'm under the blood. And the devil comes in and says, you remember what you did, see? Well, let the lamb speak. So if you get arrested, which I haven't yet, who knows, they might arrest me for preaching truth. But if they arrest you, you, you can simply say to the cops when they handcuff you, they're going to read you your rights. And they're going to say, you have the right to remain silent. Whatsoever you say shall be can be used against you in the court of law because your mouth is your evidence. And so you have a United States right to say, I plead the fifth and remain silent. 
And that verse, he said, you overcome the accuser by the blood of the lamb and by the word of what you speak. Are you ready for this? When the accuser comes, all you have to do is say what the lamb is saying. For all you deep theologians, it just went past you. It's as simple as that you change what you say about yourself. I am forgiven. I am blood washed. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm not what I used to be. I am a child of God. I've got royal blood flowing through my veins. He loves me. Oh, yes, he loves me. Tell your neighbor, you've got to say what the lamb is saying. Come on, the devil's a bully. That old serpent, dragon, he's a bully. Oh yeah, he's wimp. He, he waits on you to have a low moment, then he shows up. That's what I was going to do. If there's somebody I want to whip and they're a lot bigger than me, I wait till they got real sick. Come on, that's a good tactic. But that's what the devil does to you. He waits till you have a low moment, then he shows up in your life and you're by yourself because the most dangerous place for a person to be is alone. And he realizes that when you're alone and you're by yourself, that's why you don't stay home from church because when you're by yourself, that's where you hear the devil's voice of accusation the loudest. His voice is the loudest when you're by yourself. And he shows up in low moments and you know you deserve what you get. You know you do. And he speaks into your spirit and next thing you know, you believe in all this stuff about you that God's washed away. I had a guy one time, his name was Jerry. Jerry was the biggest guy probably in his class, he was taller than his mom when he was in fourth or fifth grade. And I was five years old in kindergarten. I'm at Pouton, West Virginia Elementary School, and I'm walking down that long sidewalk, getting ready to cross the bridge, go to that little mountain stream to get on that yellow school bus and go home. Right when I was getting ready to take a step, Jerry kicked at me. I mean, he's, he's a foot and a half taller than I am. Scared me because I was skinny. I, I was so skinny, I had one stripe on my pajama pants. I'm telling you, I just... <laughs> I was a little thin guy. I could eat like nobody's business. My mom said, where do you store all that food? I was a skinny little boy. You could count my ribs and my arms were bony. And, and this boy kicked at me. He's the biggest boy maybe in the school. And I walked on that bus. I, I told my brother David, I said, David, I said, Jerry kicked at me without, without any question. My brother went back to him and just broke his nose right there. <laughs> now, now listen. He was only eight or nine years old. I don't know how an eight or nine year old can break a boy's nose, but, but he did. And, 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 and the school bus stopped, dropped Jerry off first, and we had a pretty long ways to go. And we get home, and I get off the school bus. My dad is sitting on the steps of our house waiting on us to get off the bus because Jerry's mother had called and said, your boy just busted my boy's nose, and I'm headed up there to talk to you about this. My dad was upset because we're the preacher's kids. Oh, yeah. My dad was upset until Jerry walked, in, walked into our driveway, and he's, he's, he's six inches taller than his mother. He's a foot taller than my brother, and he's a foot and a half taller than me. I watched my dad get a smirk on his face as if he said, that's my boy. <laughs> you know what I learned about having David in my life? I had a big brother to speak on my behalf. You mess with me, you mess with him. And I come to tell you, God's not against you. He's against the accuser in your life. He's against the one that's trying to take you out. I want you to stand to your feet and shout, I've got somebody that speaks on my behalf. Oh yeah, I got stories about David. David, no questions asked, playing football in the backyard football in North Carolina. And a boy tackled me, and I'm still skinny and scrawny at eight years old. Boy grabbed me and slammed me. He picked me up and slammed me again for no reason. He's, he's older than my brother. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, a hand came down from above me and grabbed him up and snatched him up in the air, turned him around, and he knocked him out at 12 years old. I'm telling you, he knocked him out. That boy laid back in the bushes, eyes rolled back in his head. You know what it made me want to do? It made me want to walk bad because I got somebody taken up from me. Devil, you better not come out with my past. I got somebody that's coming that's greater than me. I got somebody that's coming that's greater than you. He's, 
You've overcome them, little children. For greater is he that is with you than he that is in the world. I'm preaching to overcomers. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. God's given you a new beginning and he's going to back you up. He said the enemy is coming with great wrath. You know why he's coming with great wrath? Verse 12 says it. He's coming with great wrath against the people on the earth. The people of God. You know why? Because he knows that his time is short. You know why? He does everything he can to mess you up because he knows you got a big brother that's coming into your world and when he comes into your world, he has to go somewhere else. I'm telling you, you're about to have the greatest victory in your family and it looked like the devil's been fighting. He's got leaving on his mind. He's got leaving on his mind. Tell your neighbor, the devil's got leaving on his mind. Oh yeah, he's got leaving on his mind. Jesus said, told his disciple, he said, let's, let's go to the other side. There's somewhere I gotta go. Let, let, let's go to the other side. He takes the disciples and... Uh, he steps off the boat and when his feet hit the land of the Gadarenes, Gadarenes where all the battles were fought. It was the entrance. It was the outside border of where the children of Israel were. It's where the fights were fought. If, if you were going to attack Israel, you would come to the land of Gad. And Jesus steps off the boat and when his feet step on the shoreline, a man that had a devil for a long time. Long time possessed. Are y'all with me right now? Long time bound. Long time voices. Long time accusations lived in him. They tried to bind him and couldn't. They tried to lock him up and couldn't. He, he slept in tombs and death was on his mind. He just wanted to die. He's possessed by a devil. But when Jesus stepped in, the Bible says he ran to him and opened his mouth and worshiped him. Hear me. I don't know how many devils the Legion had. He said, we are many. I heard a preacher say he had 1,000. I heard a preacher say he had 2,000. I heard another preacher say he had 6,000. I don't care if it's 1,000 or 6,000. That's a lot of devils. You know what I've learned? All the devils couldn't get him from getting to Jesus. And the devil started talking. The devil started talking to the Lord. And you know what he said? Would you allow us to leave and go to the herd of swine? You know why swine? Because they were an unclean animal. You know why they wanted to leave him and go to something unclean? Because God was about to clean him up. God was about to set him free. And Jesus simply responded and said, Go. I come into this room with a voice from heaven that says to every demonic spirit that visits your house, your mind, your spirit, get away from them. They don't belong to you, devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not what I used to be. Come on, is there anybody here blood washed? Anybody here that God's cleansed? That God's cleansed? You know what the demoniac said when he was freed? He said, I'd like you to stay here. Oh, I like you. You've done for me what nobody else could do for me. In the Bible, not only was he cleansed, the Bible says he was clothed. Are you ready? And he, was, and he was in his right mind. He could sleep at night. He's got peace. And the whole community came to see what Jesus had done in a man that nobody could do anything with. Because when Jesus walks in your life, the devil's got leaving on his mind. Because there's power in the word of the Lamb. <laughs> there's power in the word of the Lamb. Come on, I'm telling you, I feel like God is speaking on your behalf. You can't have him anymore. That's my son. That's my child. Come on, praise him if you're thankful for the blood. You're thankful for the blood. We're going to sing about the blood. We're going to talk about the blood. Yes, we're going to testify about the blood. Somebody shout, I'm not what I used to be.
Do you believe it? It's under the blood. It's under the blood. You're guilty. I plead the blood. Remember what you did? I plead the blood. Come on, I've got somebody speaking on my behalf. I am heaven bound. My family's gonna be saved because I've got the blood over me. Come on, I, 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 I've got God on my side. When you were baptized in the name of Jesus after repentance and you come up out of that water, you come up covered by the blood and you got heaven saying they're all right I find no fault in them. Tell your neighbor, God speaks on your behalf. I close in this. And here's what I'm going to ask this church. It's not good enough for the blood to speak. For the blood to cry out on your behalf. You got to start speaking what the blood's saying. Come on, quit calling yourself idiot. Worthless. I'm a nobody. I'm a failure. Oh, I'll never amount to anything. Oh no, I'm a, I, I, I'm, a, I'll always be a drunk because Daddy was a drunk. No, 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 no. When He washes you in His blood, I'm no longer what I used to be. I'm cleansed. Come on, come on. I'm helping somebody. I'm going to speak about what the Lamb is speaking. My mom and daddy taught me if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. But you know what you can't say? I'm washed in the blood. God speaks on my behalf. Somebody shout, get me behind these devil. I want you to tell your neighbor, change what you talk about. Tell somebody, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, husband and wife, you need, to, you need to look at each other and shake each other and you need to say, we gotta stop talking bad. Don't bring up what I did seven years ago. I put it under the blood. I promise I'm not what I was. God's changed. Come on, I'm preaching to some of you. Let's not bring up yesterday anymore. Let's talk about what God's gonna do. I'm leaving my past. I'm going to my promise. God's got something. Go and sin no more. There's a, there's a new beginning in this room. Come on, I'm preaching to saint and sinner. I'm preaching to everybody in the building. I wonder if you're here. You say, I've got victory on my mind. I feel victory. I feel victory. I wish somebody that I'm preaching to as a step of faith, you would get out and say, I plead the blood. Come on, get out of your seat and come to this altar. I plead. Oh, I'm going to plead the blood. I'm going to plead the blood. I wish somebody would lift your voice and plead the blood. Hallelujah. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I'm going to raise up the standard that the banner over me is love. Come on, God. God's a word speaks over me. I plead. I plead the blood. Come on, make room for people coming. Press a little closer. I'm not what I used to be. Oh. I may feel like praising the Lord. Come on, when I go to church and sing the songs, I'm pleading the blood over my life. Hey, I'm not sorry because I clap my hands. I'm not sorry because I leap for joy. He set me free from my sin. He set me free from my mistakes. Oh, sing a song. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. 
There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Oh, power. power in the blood. Sing to the Lord. Would you be full of victory? There's wonderful power in the blood. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power. Wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh! voice of accusation after you're saved raise your hand nobody's ever dealt with that voice you're not good enough but I feel like overcomers in this room I'm believe, bringing you to a point of covenant I'm telling you in this building tonight what you say matters your testimony matters do you remember when God turned some things in you around how many felt the change in your heart? Change in your mind? Oh yeah. Hey, if you slip up, God's not kicking you. He's saying, get up. You're better than that. I've got something better for you than this. I feel a revival. It's going to happen in our mouth. The Bible says the word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth, that's the word of faith which we preach. you got to start speaking what heaven is saying. Amen. Now salvation has come. Somebody say strength has come. The power of his Christ has come. I'm going to start speaking what God says about me. The accuser of the brethren. I'm going to change what I say. I want every head bowed and eye closed all over the building. I want you to make a covenant with God. I'm not degrading myself anymore. I'm not bringing up what I used to be anymore. If you're here and you have not repented of your sins, you have to. He said, if you don't repent, you'll perish. God, I want, I'm asking you to forgive me and turn my life away from sin. I don't want to live that way anymore. Once you repent, he said, repent and be baptized in every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Lamb of God. Name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. It's the washing away of everything you've ever done. When you come up out of the Bible, says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this promise is for you and your children and all that are far off. You're not too far from God for Him to wash your sins away. That's all in this building. Every head bowed and every eye closed. God, we're asking you to forgive us for listening to the voice of this deceiver the voice of the tempter and God and then listen to the voice of the accuser which is the same voice. God, help us to start speaking what you say of us. We are your people. We're the sheep of your pasture. Forgive us, God, for our opinions of us. God, we've got to forgive ourselves for the things we've said and done, places we've been. The Lord's moving in this room. God, I'm sorry for the things I bring up about them and things I bring up about me. Lord, I've seen a change in them and I'm seeing a change in me. I'm going to testify of your blood and your power and your grace. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
In the name of Jesus, I'm going to start speaking life. I'm going to speak the word of the Lord. There's power in the house. Speak Jesus, Brother Dylan. Over my family, I speak Jesus over my kids. I speak, somebody speak Jesus. Y'all feel what I feel in this room? Come on, the Lord's doing something right now in you, God. From this moment forward, I'm not speaking ill of me. I'm going to let what you speak get in my mouth and I'm going to start speaking the good things what heaven is saying about me. He, the, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Oh God, I'm going to speak what heaven's saying, not what my condemnation is saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's healing in this room for somebody. God, I believe for physical healing, spiritual healing, they're going to come a sound mind. Commit your way to the Lord. Commit your thoughts to the Lord. Commit your tongue to the Lord. Your thoughts will become established. I'm new in God. I'm not bringing it up anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Today, I quit accusing. Today, I start forgiving me. I start forgiving me. It's a new day. It's a new day. The Lord is walking into your life. Lift your hands to the Lord and say, Today I've changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I mean, you're going to change the way you speak about yourself. Come on, wave your hand at me. I mean, you're going to change the way you speak about somebody else. Oh, yeah. I'm going to speak life. I'm going to speak the blood. I told somebody in this church, I said, you know how to get rid of a stray cat? I said, quit feeding it. Every time the accuser comes, you sit down and let them tell you all this stuff about you. It's going to keep coming around. At some point you say, I plead the blood. I'm not listening to anything about my past. I'm not listening to anything about what I'm not. I plead the blood of Jesus. God's hand is on my life and I'm moving on. Hallelujah. If you're here today, you repented of your sins. Could I tell you God's forgiven you? He's slow to anger and quick to forgive. You've repented. You have not been baptized in the name of Jesus. You need to have the name of the Lamb spoken over you. There's power in His name. It makes you guiltless. Can you say amen? If you want to be baptized, I'm asking anybody that's repented today that want to be baptized, raise your hand. Something happens when you get baptized. How many believe that? And God will fill you with His clean spirit, Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. His spirit comes in your life and will lead and guide you into all truth. It's the best life you'll ever live is letting Jesus live on the inside, leading God in you. Would you clap your hands and thank God for His Word today? They're going to sing. You can linger in the altar. You can pray as long as you want to. You need to go. Amen. God bless you. Be, be blessed in Jesus' name. Be dismissed.